Hey folks, it's James. Welcome to part three of this series on using Procreate and SketchUp together. If you missed parts one or two, links are in the description below. Today we're taking things the rest of the way, adding color, glazing, and entourage, so you can see how designing and Procreate over your SketchUp masking models not only helps you reconnect to your imagination, but also saves you time by giving you the option to turn private design studies into presentation-worthy images ready for client meetings. And that's the real power of this workflow. As you design freely and Procreate over SketchUp, you're also building finished visuals that save you time. So let's dive in. And these colors came in with the SketchUp model. And I, I like keeping them at this stage. I think it's kind of a nice color in the shadows and all that stuff. But obviously we want to get some glass color in here. So to do that, we want to preserve the lines that we've drawn. And we want to add the color underneath this layer. So I'll go back to this tracing layer, even though it's not turned on. And I'm going to add my next layer on top of that. And that's going to be the first layer of color. In this case, it'll be our windows, okay? And if you ever want to name these things, just tap on the layer itself, then tap Rename. And you can come in here with the Apple Pencil 2 and scribble that out. And I'll just write in color number 1. And then tap out of the layers. And we are ready to go. And I'll start by going back to our iPad for Architects color palette. And I'll just pick one of these blue colors, and these can be changed later, don't worry about it, but I'll pick that blue color. Then I'll come over to the selection icon again, and I want to be careful. I don't want to be in automatic. I want to be this time in freehand. And that's because I'm going to track my way around this five-sided polygon and create the glass. And I'm going to go all the way to the very edges, because later on I'll cover up the edge of the glass with the trim on top and with the mullions on top. But I'll track my way around and then close that loop. And now I'll use that drag and drop method to just bring the color dot over. Now I could also go into the layer itself, tap on it, and go to fill layer if you prefer that. But that's two different ways to do that. Now I'm going to put all the same window color on the same layer so it can be changed uniformly later. So I'll go back to the selection icon and this time I'm going to choose rectangle because the next few are going to be just rectangles and this speeds things up a little bit. And I'll show you, I'll get in close so you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking for that little pre-guide that shows up from the pencil and I'm tapping and holding and pulling down right across all of the lines but I'm actually below the lines. And I'll drag and drop that. And there you can see the drafted layer is visible above this background color. And let's do the same thing here. Let's add a rectangle for this. And drag and drop. And at the last one, I'm going to have to go back to freehand because I have this big angle involved. And there is my window color. And I mentioned how you could change this. So let's go to the Adjustments menu. And as some of you have heard me say many times in my YouTube videos, I have learned more about color using these adjustments in Procreate than I learned in maybe 20 years as a watercolor renderer. And so here's the hue thing. If you want to change the basic color of your glass, make it warmer. And here's the saturation. And here's the brightness. So you can see that even those small changes will radically change the kind of emotion and the feeling of your elevations. So it's just a very powerful tool. And it allows you to adjust this in perpetuity as long as you own this iPad and as long as you own this drawing. And maybe you transfer this drawing over to another iPad. But it's permanently changeable, which is wonderful. The next layer of color I would add to this would be the mullions themselves because we still have that situation where the glass is showing through the mullions. So I'll add a layer above here. I'll go back to black and this time I'm going to use inside the acres brushes menu. I'm going to use the flat marker and just adjust it to the size of the mullions. Now I'm in and you can see that was a close one. I haven't added a layer yet so I'll add that layer. And I'll go into Drawing Assist again. And let's just quickly add these. Again, this is not trying to be beautiful. But let's quickly add these mullions. And in fact, I'll go right across 
the architecture right across the siding just to make the point that you can clean these things up in many ways after the fact. So we'll erase that once we do this. I do want to keep this pier nice and clean because we're going to do some other interesting cosmetic things to this elevation in the coming minutes. But again, I'm going right across the siding. I'm not too worried about it. It's just helping me in terms of speed. And so you can see that's a terrific way. Now we've got a bunch of crossovers. We could use the eraser for some of these. And as long as it's small enough, that's good. But another tip, I sometimes like to use the selection in rectangle mode to clean up large areas of mistakes, not mistakes, but large areas of redundancies like this. So I'll just come in with a rectangular selection mode, pull it all the way across the part that needs to be erased, do a three finger swipe and make a cursory check. And I think I've got it all. I just need to clean up a couple of moments here where I went too far with a rectangular selection. And that should do it. So I'll use the two finger pinch and let's back out. And again, you can see the emphasis on the larger mullion that's carrying the load of the ridge beam. We have the transfer beams in here. But notice how sometimes when you're using SketchUp and Procreate together and you want to get the most out of each, sometimes you'll have little parts of the SketchUp model that appear in your Procreate model or above the Procreate interventions you've made. And so let's look at how you patch those just to give you one extra tool in your tool belt to really make this the most productive thing possible. Now to make these patches, we have to go all the way back to the SketchUp layer because we're going to be altering it slightly. So I want to go into my layers menu all the way back down to the SketchUp layer and I'll enlarge it here so we can see what we're doing. And let's just take one example of this window here that has a sill that's going to project below. So I can, and I'll show you again, I'll turn off the windows and show you the issue, windows and mullions. And so let's go in here and use this as an example. Once again, I'm in the bottom layer on the SketchUp layer itself, and I will go to the selection menu and I'm already conveniently in rectangle selection. There'll be times when you may need to use freehand selection. And I'll just draw this over a piece of this siding down here and do a copy and paste. And that brings that little patch up onto its own layer above the underlying layer. And now I can alter this patch to cover up that mistake or cover up that piece of the SketchUp model that we don't want to show through. So I'll go to the move and transform menu and move and transform icon. And notice that it's already activated. It's ready asking me what to do with it. And I'm going to go this time to free form, which allows me to change that rectangle one side at a time independently. And I'm going to slide the upper handle up and it rolls up almost like a perfect garage door or something. And now that patch, that window is covered and you would never know anything different from the SketchUp model. Now we've only done a piece of the model because I know you can extrapolate what you've learned to the rest of the model or to the rest of your projects. But let's look at how we can add those trees that we saw in the earlier version. And to do that, we're going to be below the below the SketchUp layer itself. And we want the trees to be behind the SketchUp layer. And in order to achieve that fact, we probably have to eliminate this white around this SketchUp model. So we now know how to do that. Let's just quickly go into our selection icon and do a two step process. First, we'll use the rectangle and do a, as tight a crop as possible we can directly around the elevation. And that isolates the elevation and this just will ultimately get rid of the title over here and the other parts of the white. But first I have to tap the invert button down here in the context menu. And now that is protected and anything else on that layer is about to be eliminated. So we we'll use the three finger swipe again, pull down and go to cut and you saw the title go away and you can see that this now has a different shape 
in the layers menu, but that's still not enough. We, it's going to cut the trees off with that white top of the rectangle. So let's go back to the selection icon, and this time let's pick automatic again, like we did with the floor plan, and just tap it anywhere where you know that white is, and you barely have to move it. In fact, it, it kind of remembers what you, your preferences are from the last time you used it. And you can see that it turns whatever's being selected into its opposite color to make it very clear to you. And now we can use the three finger swipe. And before I do that, notice how kind of striking it is to have the elevation on a black background. And that may be one of your preferences too. So there's multiple ways to use the advantages of Procreate to create these kind of striking images. But I'll go ahead and cut that so we can get rid of it. And now let's go to the trees. And to do that, I go and double check that I've got a new layer for the trees. So I'll tap that layer here. And now I can add my trees. I'll make sure that I'm in a dark color at first, which can always be adjusted. I'll stay with this kind of blue black we just looked at. And I'll go back to the brush library and inside the Acres Brushes library I shared with you, you'll see these brush stamps that are actually trees. And if I tap a second time on this icon, you'll see that really, even though it's not showing you all the trees, this is a kind of stencil or brush stamp I created by collecting these from the internet and arranging them and making them high resolution and it makes it very simple to very quickly apply eighth scale or entourage that's at any scale you want because it can be expanded and now i'll tap out of the brush library this has been selected i'll tap out and notice how these things kind of pre-appear using the apple pencil too and i'll just firmly tap in the middle of the screen just to make sure I get the entire brush stamp array. And now I'll individually select those trees using the selection icon in freehand and just pick out the ones I want because I don't want them all. So I'll isolate one and then use that copy and paste command we used earlier to bring that up on its own layer independent of the underlying tree layer. And I'll go back to the tree layer so I make sure I'm selecting from the right place. I'll tap Selection again, and I'll pick this other deciduous tree here. And the same thing, copy and paste. It appears on its own layer. And let's do one more. Back to the overall tree layer. And let's pick one of these that doesn't have leaves. Now let's make all of these uh, combined together in one layer. So I'll tap the top one and I'll tap it again and go to merge down. And one by one, we'll merge these layers until we get to the fourth one. And at this point, I'm going to slide this layer under the house by tapping and holding down and pulling down. And now you see they all disappear behind the house. And I'll do one more thing here where I adjust the opacity and make it look like they're more in the distance. So that creates this kind of illusion of distance. And even in this condition, I can still come in with a move tool. And as long as I'm in free form, I can continue to adjust that, even to slide it left and right, and even to go and flip it horizontally if that works better for me. Don't forget to see the step-by-step -step video on how to set up this Procreate Draw to Scale workflow. Follow the YouTube link that appears in the description below and is also included in your free download. To dive deeper into Procreate, Morfolio Trace, or SketchUp for iPad in the context of real-world projects, check out my online courses at iPadForArchitects.com, a link which is also provided in the description below. And until the next time, stay creative, Stay in touch, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.